stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Edward Keller. Here. Whitey Simon. Here. Christine Holcomb. Here. Harold Bain. Excused absent. Mark Borchardt. Here. Tom Cozell. Here. Robert Newsling. Here. Keith Bell. Here. Kathy A. Schweiker. Here. Thank you. Item number four, amendments to agenda. Hearing nothing uh, on. We'll move on to item number five, approval of minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the July 24th Planning Commission meeting as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Meetings are approved, or minutes are approved, excuse me. Item number six is new business, and under item number six, we have both houses. And I will ask our planners who would like to do the honors. Good evening. So you, uh, I believe, have in your packet a memo, which is an initial discussion of potential amendments, um, should you choose to move forward, that look at, um, look at boathouses. And there's a number of different issues. Um, there's some that have come up through uh, enforcement. Some have come up through observations and discussion. Um, most of what is in here potentially is addressing non-residential districts. Um, but I think it's a good time to probably just talk about the subject in general to see how you feel about the current ordinance and whether you're happy with it or you, if you feel like maybe some tweaks need to occur. Um, I, I also want to clarify in the, in the first sentence we talked about how there are some um, existing uh, examples of existing boathouses in non-residential districts that have side enclosures. That was meant to be a generic statement in terms of not necessarily within the township, but just in general. There's in, in commercial districts is where you're most likely to see that where there maybe is repair going on or maintenance or some other type of activity. And you tend to see that in, in non-residential districts. So we're just bringing that up as an observation, not identifying specific locations in the township. Um, under the definition, that's the first section. And there's two issues here. One is, in the ordinance, you refer to a boathouse as one word and not two words, so the definition should probably reflect that. So we would amend the definition to not be two words, but be one word just for consistency. And then your definition also has a standard in it, which we don't usually like to do. Your standard should be in your standard with the standards in the ordinance and not in the definition. The definition is supposed to define what it is. So your, your current definition is a building or structure substantially over a body of water used for sheltering or hoisting one or more boats for storage. And then it talks about a standard relating to enclosures. That standard's already in your ordinance. There's no need to have it in your definition and to have it as a standard in the ordinance. So. The suggestion is, as we would with any definition that has a standard, that that be stricken and that that be found in the actual ordinance provision. And then under accessory buildings and structures, uh, you do have provisions um, under, starting with number eight, 3.018, that addresses accessory buildings um, being a boathouse. Uh, the following shall apply. Uh, so. What, what you'll start to see here with B is that we're distinguishing between residential and non-residential districts. So in residential districts, such boathouse may exceed the area of the principal building as long as, um, excuse me, in residential districts, such boathouses may exceed the area of the principal building rather than the principal residential because we're gonna start talking about the uh, principal structure may apply to any zoning district. So. In all districts, the total square footage of all buildings on the site, including boathouses, shall not exceed 30%. That's basically your current standard. We're just rewording it so that it's clear that it applies everywhere. Boathouses um, shall not exceed 15 feet in height except as provided below, and that's where we distinguish with the non-residential. So that's not a change for residential. And then boathouse shall not accommodate more than two boats unless located in a commercial or industrial district. 
And then if it's in a commercial industrial district, the maximum boathouse height shall not exceed 25 feet. The theory here is that potentially you may need some additional height, particularly if in a commercial and in in an uh, industrial setting, um, there you could be bringing something in temporarily into a boathouse for maintenance work um, or some operation like that, or, even, or possibly even um, some type of storage during the, the summer where you may bring them in temporarily. While once again, usually it's, it's associated with maintenance or repair um, or associated with some other um, marina operation. So that, that could potentially allow some flexibility uh, within, within a non-residential district. And then under D, your current regulations, which um, state a boathouse shall have all sides open for a height of not less than eight feet above the land level and enclosed um, a distance of not more than three feet down from the top of the structure's top plate. That's your current requirement. Um, this shall not apply to boathouses that are constructed in commercial and industrial districts. In districts where boathouses are permitted to have side enclosures, the total width of the boathouse structure shall not exceed 45% of the shoreline length of the subject property. So if you've got a, a piece of property that's industrial or commercial and they happen to have the need for a larger boathouse, in no instance would it be able to consume more than 45% of the width of that shoreline frontage so that you're not taking up the entire frontage. You still can see um, see the water from driving by, so to speak, you know, probably the, 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 the situation that most people would experience when they're, when they're driving by. Um, uh, and once again, this is only in commercial and industrial. This is not in residential. And then the second floor shall not be permitted in a boathouse, nor shall a boathouse have sanitary facilities. The interesting thing is that we, we would, the way you're, and what's not in here, because we're not proposing to change it, in your accessory structures section, you allow for a second story on a boathouse if it's an accessory dwelling unit. That's in your current regulations. So you either have to strike that or you'd have to add in here except as provided for in section 2025-3A, which is where you allow a second story in the boathouse. That might be something you wanna talk about whether you wanna do that or not. You may not wanna allow that, but your current ordinance allows for a, um, an accessory dwelling unit to be constructed as part of a boat, within a boathouse. Um, that's in your current ordinance. So I think we need to talk about that. And then um, in commercial industrial district, second level floors may be constructed along the interior perimeter. So it's essentially just having um, a, a second level that would get you access uh, to a boat, particularly just from the interior um, portion of the boathouse. It wouldn't go all the way across. Um, that could potentially aid in, um, in the need for um, maintenance and repair if, if one was uh, brought into a boathouse on a temporary, temporary basis. And then the rest of the language is as currently written. So once again, this is here as a point of discussion. We want your input on how you feel about the current boathouse regulations and um, I'll turn it back to the Planning Commission for discussion. Questions, comments? Could you just strike E there, that whole thing, just strike it right out and just you have to refer to the other. Um, well, I think you want to, well, I guess that's a question. In residential districts, do you want a second floor on a boathouse that can be an accessory dwelling unit? It seems kind of counter if you can't it enclose does. the first floor, why would you why want would to do it on the second floor? Well, a second floor? If you had to be from the roof down, if you can't go more than three feet, you can't. Right. That kind of well, what you would have to do to meet the ordinance is you still would have to be open at the bottom, yeah. and then you'd have the unit in the second floor above it. But only would, three feet. Right. Well, no, and this, that, that, well, uh, no, that, so we'd have obviously to it's the meant second to be. Store. It can be up there, and that's what Yeah, it I think there's, there's something that needs to be resolved with that language, and I, and I think maybe you need to consider maybe not allowing the second floor accessory dwelling units in residential. I think it's Why would that be? Well, it 
because it runs counter to what you're trying to do with boathouses in residential district, which is not to have side enclosures and for them not to block the view essentially, right? Because that's essentially what you're doing with your, with, in most communities have that regulation where you don't have side enclosures on boathouses. And if you're allowing a, an actual unit to go in, it's gonna be enclosed. I and we're talking about a second floor. No, enclosure. Right now they could do, I believe I understand this, they could do, right now they can enclose the second floor. Yes, yes the second floor, but not the lower level. Not the lower level. Not the lower. But there are some, and I don't know how long they've been there, but they've been there forever, that there's some boathouses where they're not enclosed on the first, but they have stairs going up to the second. Mm -hmm. It's just a platform. It's not enclosed. A deck. Yeah. A deck. It's a deck. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's I, not enclosed. It's not enclosed. Absolutely I not. I would like to go back probably 20, 30 years. Down on the point when somebody built a boat while boathouse. In Grand Point? Yep. Yeah. And that was torn down because mm -hmm. it did not meet our yeah. ordinances. Yeah. It was a suit. It yeah. goes back yeah. I remember 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. At least. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think we really allowed that, or it was a fluke that it was mm -hmm. disallowed. Mm -hmm. I, I would also be concerned if you have a boathouse and you have living quarters above there, and your septic system is about 300 mm -hmm. feet from there. Uh, those pumps do break down. Yes. I would agree. Well, I agree with you, but you also have the old club. Those places are on stilts. Those are houses. Yeah, it's a house. Residences. Homes, yeah. And that's, yeah, and that's a house a where residence. it's going directly the into the ground. The, suit, the waste is going directly in the ground below the house that, if it's on stilts. That's a little different situation. It's not above the water. So... Anyway, I mean, we don't have to decide thank this you. tonight. This is this is. <laughs> thank you. There, there, there's just I think there's a lot to think about yes. here, and um, I think maybe the best thing to do is to spend a little time thinking about it and put it on a future agenda. We shouldn't to, have two things to that talk. contradict each other. Yeah. That's for sure. right. So that's, that's one main. Problem. We need to think about the kind. Yeah, I think we need to think about okay, residential districts. What do we really want, really want to see there, and do we want to allow for more flexibility for enclosure in commercial and industrial districts? I don't like uh, the side access at all. I, I feel that if we allow for the commercial to do that, then you're going to have some property owners that are bordering that are residential, that are bordering commercial, are going to want to, want to change their, possibly change their residence to uh, you know, C2 or C1, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. uh, in order to do the boathouse. So that could open and a whole a can of, of worms. There's a lot of boathouses. It could be built yeah. over water or yeah. it could be cut in yeah, and, so. you know, be a lot of different. But you're starting to add to the Look at residential here, property on yeah. a small, yeah. possibly, yeah. Yeah. lot. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're yeah. way above 30 percent. You're going yeah. to 40 percent. And uh, yeah. uh, again, I don't know to what extent uh, the health department looks at the living space as compared to the septic systems right. that you have to have. If you have, uh, yeah, I don't know all that. Either. I mean, those implications. Actually, the one that Matt showed me is mm -hmm. that a garage slash boathouse? It, it looked to be just a completely enclosed boathouse with a on a back canal. Yeah, it, looked like it, had it just had garage doors, a garage door look to it. But, it but I didn't know if it was because I obviously haven't been in it, and it's a new build. Is it strictly boathouse or is it garage slash boathouse? It appears to be. It appears, appears to, to just be boathouse. The water was um, it, the garage doors were facing the water, and that there was no other way to access it. Aren't there requirements, though, with the uh, walls between those places and uh, hazards, fire hazards, gasoline in the tanks sure. of both yeah. the cars and the boats? We have, they're attached. They have to have a fire stop. Right. Definitely. Right. There's building code that applies. Code. Sure. But even with our building code as it is, some things have occurred that mm -hmm. don't match the ordinance. That is true, apparently. So. Well, I think we 
have some things to think about. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, yeah. we, we can't just put that in the back of the book. We have to keep that in the front. You have to keep right? that front, and you have to <laughs> okay, think about thank it. Thank you. Okay? We will revisit this one, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 We're not that thank you. It's a cultural thank you. thing. Yeah. Both houses yeah. will be our yeah. next fence this year. Thanks, Rod. Um, item number seven is unfinished business, which is item 7A, site plan review for 5309 Point Trumbull. So, is the applicant here by chance? Okay. And the planner, where do you want him to go first? And then we'll go with you, okay? Yeah, so this is a site plan review that was tabled from July. It's a .4 acre parcel zone C2 commercial on Point Trumbull Road, formerly Tobacco Barn. Uh, the applicant's proposing a garage uh, to the rear of the existing commercial structure. On page two of the review letter are the um, C2 district standards as they relate to the proposed um, addition. The applicants revised their site plan to comply uh, with the 10-foot side yard setback requirement and has also indicated a compliant uh, maximum building height on the revised plan. Uh, there are two um, outstanding issues for the Planning Commission to consider. First, uh, if the existing parking space layout and maneuvering into Point Tremble Lane are acceptable existing conditions. Uh, no changes are proposed to these existing conditions, but we just want your uh, consideration of that as part of the site plan review. And also, uh, the applicant should clarify what they're intending uh, with the uh, former tobacco barn sign. They're uh, stating on the site plan that no new signs are proposed, but um, we would need clarification if that sign's gonna come down, uh, refaced, or um, what is being proposed with that. So uh, those are the two issues for discussion. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions, or should we move on to the applicant? Why don't you come forward and just state your name and anything you'd like to add? Keith Klein. I own the building, 5309 Point Tremble. Um, we're not going to do anything with the sign itself. Uh, it's already been painted over, so it's just a blank sign. We're not going to add anything or take anything away. And uh, the parking is as it has been for decades. Okay, thank you. Comments, questions from board members? I uh, looked at our minutes as we approved them. And I must assume, presume, I don't assume, that they were correct. And the only difference that I saw, uh, it indicated that there would be no customers, and yet on yes. the site plan it shows a customer entrance. I guess oh. the engineer had to title it something, so that's what he gave it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's still commercial. And a customer yeah. yeah. Service fine, but there's it's a customer. Two, there's two doors, so he called one customer, one service. That, I don't know why he did that, and it's just the way he titled it. But uh, the, the, the minutes of the last meeting stand there will really be no customers. No, no, it's just my brother and I. He met the 10 foot requirement there. Any other questions or comments? Hey, dude. Discussed it first time around, but what are you, you going to be doing there with that, with that space? Which space, sir? The garage? Yeah. Parking cars in it. Pardon me? Parking vehicles in it. You're not going to have any customers? Of, uh, no, we have no customers. Nobody comes <coughs> to our. We are traveling sales guys. We go to the customer 100% of the time. Nobody comes to us. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments, questions, motion? I recommend 
approval. Wait, 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 hold on. Eric's doing this little finger thing over here. Oh, sorry. sorry, Eric. Um, so the zoning ordinance, um, um, is with the new information as far as the sign being painted over, um, the zoning ordinance considers um, signs that are related to businesses that no, are no longer operating on the site as abandoned signs that are required to be removed. Um, so that should be addressed as part of the proposal um, since the it's obviously not the tobacco barn anymore and since they're doing a site plan review to maintain compliance with the zoning ordinance. So you're saying the sign is coming down? Sign is going to come down. Versus just saying you can't use it and we can paint it over. That's up to us. It can't. It can't be related to a, a use that's not on the site anymore. Right. Thank you for that additional information. And that's uh, 23.04 number five on page 23-2. But if he was to put his own company up there or something, that would be fine? Because it is a company, right? Yeah. If it's just a face change on the a cabinet that's on the pole currently and there's no increase to the cabinet or um, it could be reused for the new business, but this is to get yeah, signs down that are, you know, defunct for defunct businesses. Yeah, for the sign, right? <laughs> He's going to change the sign? Well, yeah. the verbiage on it? I, I can't believe that. Yeah, you would likely need a face change permit to, for the billing department to make. It's an administrative level decision, but just to have a record of that. Um, right. So that could be an option. It could be either it's um, removed or uh, permits issued for the current use of the site. Just so that it's not an abandoned um, sign. You could have the applicant address that if they're willing to do either of those uh, two items. Or you could condition it on either yeah. one or two things that right. way. Right. Do you have a preference? <laughs> Since now you've heard the additional information. <laughs> Take a magic marker. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't want to have to pay to have the sign removed. So if I can paint the name of the company on the sign and consider it in use, I'd prefer to do that. Okay. But if I have to pull permits and have uh, architectural drawings done and submitted oh, right. and all of that sort of thing, <laughs> which I've had to do in another city, uh, I certainly don't want to go through that process. So if it's a matter of me just painting, professionally have the name painted on the sign and that satisfies the requirement, I'm willing to do that. I'm trying to remember, we just did the one by Lumberjack and they had the sign issue out there. Uh, you know, what do we do there? Go ahead. Typically, if you're going to hire a sign person to do that, they would prepare a simple sketch. You know, oh my. It's not an engineering drawing. It would just be a simple sketch. I think that's probably, I don't, I mean, this is done by the building department, so I don't know their exact process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you for sure what they're going to require because that's done by the building. And it's a simple permit. I mean, it's a simple permit, yeah. It's just Again, my previous city that I was in, I was required to hire a professional sign company who had to do architectural drawings, yeah, and it, it turned into a big, expensive yeah, ordeal. Have to do that for this type of thing because you're just changing the sign page. It's not okay. Sign. I just want to clarify what I need to do. I guess we could always potentially do a motion and or, but you got to do one or the other. I mean, there's that. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and or, it gives you your option with so okay. many days you yeah, have to do it. If, you, if we're wrong, to me. give you false information because I really don't think okay. there's that of a process to do that, not at all. I don't mind a, a process, I just don't want the expense. No, right. expense, I meant, yeah. yeah, exactly. Thank you for that information. Yes. May I make a motion to recommend approval for five, uh, the uh, site plan for 5309 Point Trimble, C2 Small Business, property 7414433001-00, Provided the sign is either removed or reused by the new business. Do, before we go any further, do we need to address the parking issue? We can 
Yeah. All right. All right. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, moved. And who seconded? <laughs> Keith. Keith. No. Keith. No. 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 Ed. Oh, Ed. 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 Sorry, Ed. Sorry, didn't hear you. Any more questions, comments? Everybody understand the motion? No. Yep. All right, roll. Go ahead, Ed. Keith Fell. Yes. Edward Keller. Yes. Randy Simon. Yes. Christine Holcomb. Yes. Harold Bain. Excuse. Mark Barshaw. Yes. Tom Cozell. Yes. Robert Musley. Yes. Kathy Schweiker. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Just one second. We have to do some stamping and the signature, okay? Mm -hmm. You need your signature then too, okay? Yes. All oh, three. All Can three. you get the bottom copy, okay? And that's for your Like, did you go to some it's seminar or something? Yes. Or? Well, we're, we're, it's going to be a chapter in your master plan. Oh, thank you. And next meeting, we're actually going to be um, doing a, a presentation on the existing conditions chapter. That's about 80% done mm -hmm. right now. So we wanted to, um, so that includes the maps and demographics and population changes and things like that. So um, we'll be updating you on that at the next meeting. Uh, the resiliency, coastline resiliency, will also be included in your master plan. So um, we'll be presenting that soon. We look forward to it. Yes. Of course we do. Of course. Um, item number nine, ZBA representative's report. We had a meeting. There was one appeal, 7917 Lake Drive. The owner wishes to demolish his existing house on the non-conforming and rebuild as also non-conforming. Um, there were a lot of varying factors as far as what he was asking. He wanted a variance on the setback. He wanted variance on the square foot coverage. And as we explained to him that, you know, even though it's already non-conforming, our job is to keep it as minimally non-conforming as possible, not additional non-conformancies. So we basically tabled the appeal to give the applicant the opportunity to meet with the new building officials and try to rectify the site plan and make it l less non-conforming than it already is. What address was that? 7917 Lake Drive. 
What, what drive? Lake. Lake, oh, Lake okay. Drive. Yeah. That's all I have. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Item number 10 is board representatives report. Uh, nothing to report uh, concerning the Planning Commission on the last meeting we had. The next uh, board meeting is September the 3rd, right here. Thank you. Item number 11 is Chairperson's Report. Um, I'm in receipt of two emails. It was emailed, I think, to planners also. Um, one was from Cindy Valentine regarding an individual who lives on Inglewood Drive, concerns about the restaurant, I believe it's called the Rocks Restaurant and the noise and stuff of that. So I'm just generalizing that. And the other one was a concern from neighbors on also, again, Inglewood regarding rentals. Did you see that one? Yeah, the first one says. Well, actually, the rentals probably came before the last one from Cindy. So those are two things I was in receipt of. And as far as our, I don't know if I need to mention it or not, but the continuation of the public hearing regarding blue horseshoes, right? Tentatively now is to September 28th. 25th. 25th, I'm sorry. <laughs> Today is 28th. Okay. And other than that, I don't really have anything more to add. Oh, just, go ahead. Just so that's on the record, um, they would need to submit their materials by September 4th. Okay. Which is three weeks, as I discussed, three weeks before the meeting. So um, we will let you know if we receive those by next Wednesday. Sure. So I just wanted that on the record for anyone who's here um, for that project. If we do not receive materials by the end of the day, Wednesday, September 4th, it will be postponed again to October. Perfect. Thank you for clarification on that. Yes. All right. Um, item number 12, Planning Commission members' comments. I have a question perhaps and a comment. Well, we've been encouraged now for a number of years to attempt to respond to applicants in a timely fashion. Does the applicant have the same need to respond in a timely fashion? As far as submitting the paperwork that has been requested. This goes back to June now, doesn't it? May? May? Yeah. May. May, I believe the, or it might be April or May. Yeah, it's, it goes back a number of months. Almost six months then. Um, and there's nothing we can do except ask them to submit it. Commission members' comments? Hearing nothing, I'll move on to item number 13, which is public comments. If anybody wants to make a public comment, please come to the podium and state your name, and please remember the um, rules that we have governing public comments. Somebody's out raising you. Basically, oh, Joe Vansomay's uh, 7237 Blue Bill. And these are just basically comments. He was talking about the boathouses, the, the new code make them 20 foot, 25 foot high ceilings. How do you put a second story on top of that? Now you're way over 25 feet. And I heard comments on boathouses with garage doors and so on. Just go down Flamingo on the canal. There's there's a lot of places down there to have their garage, a garage door, you know, coming off the street that open up right to the back, which have boat wells in them, along with the second story place. And there's a bunch of them. So you may want to look at them before you start making too many revisions to things. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate You're welcome. Anyone else? And those are new places. Thank you. Your name and address, please. Diane Miller, 7311 B Lane. Um, oh, for, for the first comment I have is in regards to the microphones. Um, I wasn't able to attend last month's meeting. 
We can't hear you guys on those recordings. Like you, you can see all your microphones are straight up. When I go to see it at home, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to see it. There were several occasions where the, the planners were addressing people in the back and we couldn't hear what they were saying. Um, anyway, that's, I, I would like to, a little bit better microphone use. Um, and in regards to uh, the uh, Blue Horseshoe public hearing, um, I'm wondering if they haven't done the traffic study yet, is it even gonna be valid if it's not done in the summer? Um, also, um, the Corps of Engineers boat study, since the 150 houses back in the Steyer sub, or Perch Point Isles, um, since our boats aren't in the water, how, are, how is our boat traffic going to be taken into consideration if we're not running our boats back and forth through there when they do the study? Um, and also, um, in reading the DEQ permit, there is not supposed to be any work being done on the seawall between April 1st and September 30th. And they are currently installing seawall in violation of the permit. So I'm not sure who's responsible, how do violations of the permit get reported. Uh, I think that there's more than just that one violation that's happening right now. Um, I did a drone video over the island and uh, there's uh, dredged material that's being dumped on the island. I'm not sure it's uh, the DEQ permit says that it can't be dumped. It has to go upland and not in any floodplains or wetlands. I kind of thought the whole island was floodplains. Um, there's no turbidity curtain installed for during the dredging. But the basic thing is, is that they're not even supposed to be working on it until after September 30th. And I don't know how these violations would get uh, reported, but I just wanted the planners to be aware that they're already working in violation of the permits and it just goes to show some of their character. Thank you for your comments, appreciate Thank you. it. Any other public comment? Hello, I'm uh, Keith Stein. My address is 7889 Stark. And I wanted to go a little bit further than what uh, the previous uh, speaker talked about in terms of the Blue Horseshoe Project. So what I, what I did is I took some pictures and I recognize that this might not be in your control, but I wanted to share them with you anyway so that you can see what's going on. So. of a, uh, of a uh, home, if you will, a mobile home there, a trailer home, where somebody's living on the property as we speak, and that should not be allowed. But there's also evidence there, if you look, where they took the dirt that they dredged from the canal and put it onto the property. And there's a lot of concerns that I have and that other concerned residents have in regard to what they're doing that seems to be outside the provisions that were allowed for with their DEQ permit. Because one of the things that we all in this community have to be concerned about is the health and welfare of everybody in this community. And when you're dredging the soil from the bottom of the canal, the reason that the DEQ is so concerned about how that's handled is you're bringing toxins to the surface. And they have to be handled in a way that doesn't bring our whole community into harm's way. My concern with this whole project has been that there seems to have been from day one a attempt by, the, by these folks to circumvent some of these rules. And this delay in getting the traffic studies seems to further exasperate the, the whole process. 
because like Diane said, when they wait and they now do this next month or the month thereafter, we're not gonna get an, accur an accurate read on what's going on with traffic during the peak periods. So I think that's something that we need to address and maybe that is something that is under your uh, oversight. But going back to the point about the health and welfare of this community, we have to be real concerned. St. Clair, Count Clair County is rated uh, number 12 as the highest, the 12th highest area in this state for incidents of cancer. So we need to be concerned as a community what people are doing when they're stirring this stuff up, whether it's gonna increase the exposure that our residents have to cancer. And this whole project puts compromises our community in that they're gonna have in excess of 200 boats there. <clears throat> And you extrapolate any way you want in terms of how many people will be there at any given time. What's that going to do for the people that are partying there, drinking, and not bothering to use the proper facilities when they need to go to the bathroom? And how, how much is that going to pollute our, our water? It, it, it's already unsafe to swim. Some people aren't swimming in the water as it is right now. I have grandkids that I'd like to be able to use the water and I think we have a moral responsibility to the community to make sure people aren't doing things that will compromise the quality of our water. So I, I thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Any other public comments? Sir, do you want your pictures back? No. Okay. Any other public comments? I see no hands or anybody approaching, so I'm going to move on to item number 14, which is adjournment. So moved. Second. <laughs> you don't need a second. All in favor. All, right. All opposed. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for coming.